All right, how y'all guys doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. And for this video, I will be doing another morph showcase. So we're going to be talking about the Super Arctic Morph in Plains or Western Hog Nose Snakes. And before I get this presentation up and going, just want to give out a quick disclaimer. None of these pictures, except for one, are mine. I got most of these pictures either from Facebook, from Instagram, from Google, or Morph Market. Um, a lot of them come from the same person, but I don't own any rights to them and I'm not using them for any financial purposes. This is basically a video just to educate people that are interested in the hog nose snakes and just, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully they can watch this video and share the same passion that I have. So with that uh, being stated, let's get into the PowerPoint. So um, first we're going to talk about the Arctic gene. So Arctic is an incomplete dominant gene. So basically that means that in order for the snake to visually have those characteristics of the Arctic gene, it only needs one copy from either the mom or the dad. Unlike the recessive gene, which needs one copy from the mom and the dad. And so I have um, two pictures right here. On the left hand side, we have a normal morph hog nose um, or the wild morph. And then on the right hand side, we have a good visual representation of what the Arctic gene looks like. And to be honest with you, I'm not 100% accurate in terms of identifying the Arctic gene because you have some that are very obvious and then you have some where you kind of have to question yourself whether it's Arctic or not. And so some of the basic characteristics of just the, the general Arctic gene, where it's just one copy of that, of that gene, is usually the background of the snake is either a whitish or a gray color. You have a lot of contrast between the background as well as the pattern. And usually the pattern has an outline of black pigmentation. Um, it can be totally outlined in the pattern or it can be just some little splotches around the pattern and you usually see it it's usually really visible around the pattern along the face of the hog nose and so this picture to the right i feel like it's a good example of the arctic gene but like i said i've seen pictures of normal of snakes listed as a normal hog nose snakes that look like an arctic to me as well as i've seen pictures of an arctic something listed as an arctic but then at the same time it's listed as a normal hog nose so it can be it's a lot of variation so what happens when you have a snake that gets the arctic gene from the mom and the arctic gene from the dad you get what's called a super arctic and so basically this is three pictures examples of the uh, super arctic gene some of the characteristics are those dark black eyes so the iris and the pupil are totally black which is very unique um, in hog nose snakes and also you see more contrast between the background and the pattern. As you see on the left hand side, um, this snake has a very, very light pattern. It's basically white and then the pattern is almost completely black. So you see a lot of contrast, it looks like a zebra. Then in the one in the middle, you still see a lot of contrast between the pattern and the background of the snake. But as you can see, the pattern has less melanin which is actually pretty cool and pretty unique and then you see the one on the right hand side which has a very light background and then you have a lot of that dark melanin pigmentation in the pattern so one of the cool things about the super arctic is whenever they're first born they're almost jet black and as they age and as they shed out you start seeing more contrast between their pattern and in their, their background color. So that's pretty cool. So that's one way to um, quickly identify if you, if you hatched out a super arctic, it's gonna be almost jet black. And like I say, as it ages, you're gonna see more contrast. So now let's start getting into some combinations with the super arctic. Uh, the first one, we're gonna add in the other incomplete dominant gene that's found in hog nose snakes, which is the anaconda, and it's basically a pattern reduction. So here are some examples of the super arctic conda. So the super arctic, a snake that has two of the, the arctic genes, but just one of the anaconda genes. And the snake on the far left is actually my snake Diablo. He is a super arctic conda. And as you can see, he has all the characteristics of the super arctic, but just a reduced pattern. Uh, this middle snake is probably, I think it's the prettiest super arctic I've ever seen because it has that really nice, that really white background, 
but then his pattern is actually brown and it's outlined in that dark black pigment. And then you have another pretty one to the right. As you can see, huge contrast between a background color and the pattern. And you can see those jet black eyes. I think the super arctic condas, man, they look really nice. And so what happens when you have the super arctic super conda? So you have both of the incomplete dominant traits and they're both in their super form. You have a snake that looks similar to the super arctic conda, but as you can see, um, it has even less of a pattern. And one of the, the distinctive things about the super arctic super condas are usually super condas have um, just a just the head pattern and then the rest of their body is completely patternless for some reason the super arctic still re Retains the dorsal pattern. So it usually still has that stripe along its back It's just a really reduced and in my opinion sometimes this car is hard to tell in terms of the super arctic if it's a conda or a super conda I'll go back to the previous slide as you can see like in the middle one that that's a very reduced pattern You know what I'm saying even my snake Diablo it kind of looks similar to a super conda Because it still has that dorsal pattern along the line, but yeah, man It looked really cool and hopefully I can produce a super arctic super conda in 2021 all right, so now with that being said, let's go into some combinations when we involve other recessive genes instead of the incomplete dominant where the animal is a, the super form of the Arctic, but then it has two copies of the recessive gene. One of the recessive genes from the mom, one of the recessive genes from the dad. So the first one we're going to go into is what does the snake look like when you combine albino with super Arctic? When you do that, you get pretty much a pink snake, man. And a super arctic albino is also known as a sub-zero. As you can see, um, it has those, you know what I'm saying, really, really vibrant pink color, and you can see a lot of contrast. The animals in the, in the middle and to the left are hatchling, so it, you don't see as much um, contrast between the pattern and the background but the one to the right is a little older and you can see that white background and then the pink pattern and then it's kind of hard to tell because it's an albino but the iris and the pupil are totally red so it's pretty cool so now let's combine the super arctic albino with the condomorph and so when you get that you have basically that same animal but with just a reduced pattern and this animal is called the bub's daddy so the super arctic albino conda and i really like that picture to the to the furthest right man that's a really good picture um you can see the um the dorsal pattern the reduced pattern looks pretty cool so now let's add the super form of the anaconda where you'll get a super arctic super conda albino and this is what's called a super daddy. So basically a pink snake with a very reduced pattern. And that, that looks pretty cool, man. Um, I'm not sure who named these animals, but it is what it is. All right, so now let's get into the next recessive gene that's found in the super arctics when you combine the super arctics. Um, the next one is gonna be, what does a super arctic look like when it's mixed with lavender? And if you watched my previous video when I went over the, la the lavender mutations, you probably already saw this. I'm just included the same slides. So a super arctic lavender is known as a moonstone. And kind of like with the super arctic, there's a lot of variability. There's a lot of variability in the lavender. So you get all these different kind of looking snakes, these different colors. You get greens, blues, purples. They look really cool, man. And this is this is a very unique morph combination in terms of the hog nose snake. All right, moving along, let's get into the next um, morph combination involving a super arctic. So, what does a super arctic look like when it's mixed with toffee belly? And so, when you mix those two, you'll get this type of snake right here, man. This is a very pretty snake. As you can see, it still has the characteristics of the super arctic, those solid black eyes, and then that huge contrast between the pattern and the background. And I really like that picture um, to the right. The, the one to the right and the one to the far left are the same snakes, and that, that looks really cool, man. You definitely can see a combination of both the toffee and the arctic, the super arctic. All right, now let's get in um, to the next 
um, gene combination and we're going to get into the super arctic pistachio and I'm not too familiar with the pistachio gene I don't really see too many people that work with it um, especially on morph mark you never really see too many people have them for sale so it's kind of like a greenish hog nose snake it's another recessive trait so what happens when you mix a super arctic and a pistachio you get this snake right here called the super specter and um, this right here is actually um, a super arctic pistachio conda. Um, there is the super arctic pistachio, but I could not find that picture. The guy that, that first produced the snake, I checked on his Facebook page like three times. And I don't know, I guess he just deleted that picture. They actually do have a picture in Kevin Rhodes' uh, hog nose book if you were interested in that. Um, this isn't a really good representation, but it looks like a, a super arctic um, with kind of more of a greenish pattern to it. Um, so I wish I had a better picture than that, but um, that's pretty much it, man, with this uh, PowerPoint. Kind of like with the lavender gene, with the sable gene, there are so many combinations that haven't been done yet, man. And these were all the ones that I could find. I'm pretty sure that there, there's more out there that I missed. But think about, um, I'm waiting for somebody to produce a super conda uh, sable, man. That, that's going to look crazy right there, man. That's, that's going to be probably a really dark snake. Um, also, the super arctic, I mean, super arctic uh, pink pastel hasn't been out yet. That's going to be a really, really pinkish snake. Also, what do you think a, a, a super arctic exanthic will look like? Those are all things that haven't even been done yet, man. So it's a lot that it's a lot of potential in the hog nose snakes, especially with the super arctic gene. I definitely think this is a gene that you should add to your collection if you can afford it. Hopefully, I'll be producing my own this in 2021. Um, definitely, y'all, my subscribers, man. If I if I have any available, y'all will be the first ones to know. Um, but yeah, man, if y'all like this video, leave a comment below, leave a like. Also, man, if there's any animals that have the super arctic uh, combination that I missed out, man, y'all leave it below as well as let me know which morph you want me to highlight next. Um, I appreciate everybody and I'll see y'all in another video.